All right, in today's video, I'm going to go over how to set up an NMEA 2K network in your particular boat, the components that you need, and how they come together, a few details about the components that might be helpful to you. But before we do that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. So here's my little tabletop NMEA 2K network. Let me go ahead and take this apart and go over the different components that make up this network. Alright, so a couple of things that you want to be aware of when you have an NMEA 2K network. One of them is the bus itself. Now, the bus, so there's a bus cable, um, sometimes interchangeable with a drop cable. There's some limitations though. The bus cables are typically done so that they're waterproof and able to withstand conditions. Now, one of the things that you have to understand about the bus or the backbone is that overall end-to-end -end it can be the maximum of 200 meters. 200 meters is pretty significant. If you have a 200 meter boat, you're probably not doing this on a DYI basis. But anyway, that's one of the things about NMEA that you really need to know is that there is a backbone. This is where all the signal flows uh, from one end to the other. Next most important piece is going to be a T-connector. So this is a double T right here. Let's take this off. This is a double T, um, which is acceptable. This is a single T. Um, show you some of the things that you probably should know about this. Uh, it's a five pin connector that's part of the bus. You probably see that. I hopefully can see that. Let's see if you can see the pins in there. But anyway, there uh, is a male connector on one side female on the other and the top of the T or the bottom part of the T depending on how you look at it that's for the drop cable that's always going to be a female so let's put that down the next component that you need is going to be power you need to feed 12 volt power to your NMEA uh, bus and um, this is a special T connector that has it some of them have fuses built in I'm going to put this in the uh, Montauk 17 to a, um, basically to a circuit breaker, so we're not going to need a fuse on this. But you do need to feed power to the network. Um, now, now that we have power, these things are keyed so they can only go in one way. All right, we have power there. We're going to connect this T. We have the other T. Now notice it's a female connected to this male. And I'm not going to screw these down. So now there's two other things that we need to know. The two ends of the bus have to have terminators. So these are terminators. There are 150 ohm resistors that are inside of these. So what we would do is put this in the correct orientation on this end. Male to female. This one's female on this end to male on this end. couple other components. What are we going to need? We're going to need a drop cable. All right, so this particular drop cable I have here, I'm going to connect it to this double T. And what will end up happening with this one, or it could be any, any one, is it's going to go to this low rance. And there's also an NMEA 2K connector on this particular device. I'm not, I'm not going to connect it, but we'll go through the motions here so you can see uh, pretty much what I'm doing. And um, at long term, I'm actually going to use this one uh, to monitor engine data. Probably overkill, but that's just the way I do things. The other thing we're going to need, and for my particular installation, is a cable that goes to my Yamaha. This one is specific to Yamaha, and it has a Yamaha cable on one end. I believe this cable is 6 meters, um, long enough to handle the uh, engine to the uh, to the console and it's male on this side so we're going to connect that to this guy right here no. so what we have here now is uh, on the tabletop is a NMEA 2K network um, terminators, T's, power feed, 
bus cable, if you will. Um, although when I implement this in my boat, it's these, these are going to be connected directly to each other. This will be used as a drop cable to another device. But again, it's a pretty handy way to um, get everything set up. Let me show you a diagram of what an NMEA network might look like and the lengths that are involved. So you can see the overall length is 200 meters for the backbone. That's end to end from terminal resistor to terminal resistor. Uh, the drop cables to the devices or nodes as they're called is a maximum of six meters, which is you know, fairly significant. Um, and then the max, dis uh, excuse me, the max distance between T connectors is going to be 100 meters. And I've got a pretty neat diagram here of what a uh, NMEA network might look like and what components might be on there. You might have pressure sensor, temperature sensor, rudder angle sensor if you're sailing, um, various components, uh, speedometer, tachometer, multifunction tag, and multifunction display, which is how I'm going to have mine set up. Now I mentioned PGNs earlier, and to give you an idea, here's a bunch of PGNs. Um, there's a lot of things that can be transmitted that there's messages defined for. So there's uh, attitude, heave, rate of turn, vessel heading, rudder, um, trip fuel consumption. That would be of interest and actually typically shows up on some of the uh, units like the Lowrance that I showed you before. Battery configuration, there's just a number of things, uh, navigation data, track errors. So there's there's a significant amount of data that can be moved around in a uh, NMAA 2K network. In essence, NMAA 2K is to boating what ODB2 is to cars. Actually, they're both based on the same CAN bus technology that's described in ISO specifications. Um, except that NMEA is geared towards maritime use and of course there's some challenges in the um, marine industry that would make it viable, um, i.e. waterproof connectors for one. Anyway, um, before NMEA 2K there was NMEA 0183. So 0183 is a serial protocol. It only allowed one device or port um, to talk at a time and um, it was very slow. 4.8K actually slower than dial-up uh, modems. The NMEA 2K is a bus system, and what that means is that everybody's connected to the same communications port, um, or bus, if you will, and anybody can talk uh, into that bus, and everybody can listen to what everybody else is talking. It's also much faster. The data rate on it is 250K, which is certainly better than you know 4.8K. So why NMEA 2K? One of the key advantages of NMEA 2K is that you can have different components um, basically data that are either from sensors or from environmental factors, uh, radar, wind, engine data from the uh, engine sensors, um, GPS, all of this can be communicated to each other and devices can use it or not depending if they need that level of information. So one of the things I did want to say is that that data is moved along the bus through PGNs or parameter group numbers and the PGNs actually identify what type of message it is and what is involved in it in the data group. So anyway that's my overview of NMEA 2K um, how I'm going to set this up on that Boston Whaler Montauk 17 that 83 that I got with a Yamaha F70 engine um, do I really need to do this? Probably not, but why not? Um, it's not that expensive. I think I've got less than $100 invested in this overall um, cable system that we just saw. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful to you. If you're going to set up an NMEA 2K network, make some comments below. Let me know how it worked for you, or if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer it. I will be putting some links in here to more detailed data for those of you who are a little bit more nerdy, um, like I am then you can follow those links and you'll get some decent information on them. Anyway, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe.